psalmist said, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard my cry. Come on, begin to lift up your voice. Begin to lift up your voice. Begin to lift up your voice. Come on, that feels good in this house. Hey, I believe that there could be a Pentecost that could happen in this place right now. If we would all get in one mind and one accord, why don't you lift up your hands? Why don't you lift up your voice? Your miracle is in this house right now. Oh, there's healing virtue. I feel the expectation that God's going to do miracles in this place. I'm going to read in Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7. It said, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast out in the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused him before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death.
everybody as a choir. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, sing it. By the word of my testimony, overcomer. Come on, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Come on now, lift up your hands and let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's thank Him for already meeting us in this house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Before you make your way back to your seat, I want you to turn and find somebody that you have never met and introduce yourself to them. Amen. Come on, young people, I know you know how to talk to each other. Young people find a young person, adults find an adult. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time. God bless you. You may be seated. Everybody take out your cell phone. We're going to do a mandatory um, confiscation before preaching, but take it out right now. Go to your maps. Type in Champion Community Center. It's at 109 Belding Street, West Belding Street here in Hot Springs, just a couple minutes from the church. After this service, immediately following the service, if you make your way to Champion Community Center, 109 West Belding, we have rented the entire facility. $5 gets you in the door and get you hot dogs, chips, drink, and we have the facility until midnight. We have two full courts, <clears throat> basketball courts, in two completely separate rooms. So what we're going to do is 13 and above. If you want to play basketball, stay on the front court. It's going to be a full court run. And then in the back gym, 12 and under, and volleyball will be split in, in the courts there. It's going to be a wonderful time. You don't want to miss it. Man. Amen. All right. Welcome to Calvary Pentecostal Church of Hot Springs. Amen. We are honored. So many of you have made your way to be in service with us tonight. We have some special guests. We have a group from the Pruitt's Church. Amen. We're thankful y'all are here. Amen. And then my friends, the Smiths from just north of us. Amen. Amen. And then Brother Hinchy, he's from way north of us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, thought, I thought that winter was over and I went to preach for him and I was driving my poor car across snow to get to the place we were staying. It wasn't done being winter up there in Marshall. Amen. And then... So many others. I want, we have a, a few very special guests. Brother Weed from Jethro, Arkansas. Is that right? Amen. We're so glad you're here. Why don't you come greet the congregation? Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I got this good little scripture. I like to say it every time I get into a pulpit. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's nothing I like better. They're coming into a place where everybody's got the same mind. Our hearts are the same. Oh, I feel the presence of God in the parking lot. 
and then come through the door and just there it was. Hallelujah. I told Brother Moats, I said, man, I feel at home. I feel at home. Man, I don't know how far you drove, but I thought 23 was crooked until we took Highway 7. Amen. The pig trail ain't got nothing on them, that one. But anyway, it's a good, good, good little drive down here, most beautiful. And uh, I'm looking forward to what God's going to do. I'll, I'll give honor to your pastor tonight and this great church for hosting these events. I know we just had one. I'm telling you, that it's a, it'll make your hair fall out and turn gray and everything else. And, uh, but I give honor to this church for hosting this. This is the future. Oh, I'm glad two people know what I'm talking about. This is the future. Amen. You know why we take time to pray with these little kids down here at these altars? Because one day they're going to be standing in this pulpit. They're going to be pastoring churches all over this state. If we don't put it in them here, the world going to put something in them. It's up to the church. The church got to stand up and be triumphant in this last day. We've got a responsibility to keep the sacred things sacred. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I give honor tonight. God bless you. Amen. And then a, a new friend, Brother Newman from Hazen. We were great friends of, of our great friends of Brother Adams. and He's carrying on the work there. And Hazen, we're so glad you're here. That's a terrible drive from Hazen to here, so thank you for making it. Amen. We want him to come greet the congregation. Why don't you make him feel welcome? Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I'm glad I'm in the house of the Lord on a Friday night. Praise God. Amen. Give honor to your pastor and the ministry here. It's uh, You can't make... You can't make good old friends. So I got, a, I got a short amount of time to make a good old friend. Amen. A couple of them. Amen. And I just feel, man, I feel so comfortable in the Holy Ghost. I feel comfortable in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just rubbing shoulders with men of God and watching these young people. I felt the Lord all over this place. I saw the Lord all over this place. Amen. I feel him right now. Praise God. I feel him right now. There's no telling what will happen. Praise God. Amen. Just uh, just started pastoring that church over there. I've been on the field for a while. Uh, I guess I've been in the field for a long time. Just finally got some roots. Amen. Uh, different fields. I've been in the United States. <laughs> That's the field I've been in. And uh, been traveling and God has truly blessed us. It's good to have my wife and my three daughters. And also got another couple young ladies with us from Hazen. And these three munchkins right here on the second row. All the way from the thriving metropolis. 1,600 people in Hazen. Amen. A lady came to church the other day and she said to me, she said to me, Pastor, she said, I felt heaven when I pulled in the parking lot. And she said, it got better when I walked through the door. And she said this. She said, Pastor, it feels like heaven because you don't know the hell I just walked out of. And that stopped me in my tracks because you never know who walked in the building. I don't know who you are, where you're from, what your background is, where you came from. But everywhere I find somebody in the Bible that had a need... That need propelled them. We know blind Bartimaeus was blind. We know the man that was blind from birth was blind. We know that Zacchaeus had a problem. He was short. <laughs> Praise God. I relate to that. We know the woman with the issue of blood had to deal with that for 12 long years. The lame man was lame. He just sat around begging. We know that he was waiting. He was waiting for somebody to help him. We know that a woman came to Jesus who had a need at home. She said, my daughter's grievously vexed. Couldn't do anything about it. There's some people in this house tonight, young people and adults alike. There might be some situations you're dealing with at home. Some things that are out of your control. Some things, 
look, this is what happened. In every one of these situations, the need didn't stop them. The need propelled them. The need pushed them. Bartimaeus wouldn't quit. The woman with the issue of blood didn't let the crowd stop her. Look, there was even a man, there was even a man who was possessed with thousands of devils. And he ran to Jesus. His need pushed him to an encounter with God. I would submit to you tonight, as this good preacher is about to preach, there's many needs. Can you, can you admit with, with me tonight? There's many needs in this house. You might not even want to admit you got a need. And that's what a lot of times we do. We want to hide it. But God knows the need. Here's what I want. Here's what I want to know. Are you going to, are you going to let your need stop you or are you going to let your need propel you? You're going to let your need push you to get what you want from God. Amen. In this house tonight, I've already felt him. Amen. And God's, God's going to move again. Amen. I know he's, going, he's been moving all day. Praise God. Amen. Would you let that need push you to an encounter where you're changed, where you're delivered, where you're set free, where you're healed in Jesus' name? Amen. Why don't we do that in this house? Why don't we just let God, why don't we let just, just let God have his way in Jesus' name? Amen. Worship along with them. One last song. The ushers are going to come at this time. You may be seated.
Amen. You can make your way back to your seats, but remain standing. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna get the preacher to the pulpit. You know, it feels like we're sitting on dynamite tonight. Amen. And 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 with with any little push, we could just shout the night away. We could dance. But you know, as as the Holy Ghost was moving in praise and worship. I was praying and just seeking after the Holy Ghost. And I felt the Lord impress in my spirit that He wasn't even close to having done all that He planned to do tonight. Amen. I'm thankful for the response to the, the worship and the, the response of praise and, and the music. It's, it's good. It's right. It's needful. But there is nothing that will change your world like the preached Word of God. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Amen. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. It, the, the Spirit began to move into void, into confusion into darkness but it didn't change until God began to speak amen then it says and God said let there be light and there was light amen there's a lot that can happen when the spirit is moving but when you get the spirit moving and the word weaving into it amen there'll something beautiful come out of your life amen I'm so honored to have my friend, Pastor Jesse Hinchy. It's a long story and an absolute God connection. But I was going to Brazil, and I love Bucky's, and I love in and out so I decided to drive from here to Dallas before I flew. I was going to end up in Dallas anyway. So we drove to Dallas and checked in in the airport, walking toward the, the dreaded TSA security line. And I see an apostolic man walking toward me. And I'm just the guy. I I said, there's an apostolic right there. I'm going to go talk to him. Little did I know he was coming to talk to me too. And so we just walked to each other. And he said, you're Brother Motes, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, I saw you on the flyer. He said, my baby just walked through those gates. The one that just sang. Amen. He said, she's never flown before. He said, can y'all please take care of her? Amen. You know, they've got family in Dallas, and, and we, can, we can reason it away however we want. But I've been to Brazil before, and I never drove to Dallas to get there. I've always been behind the gates. Amen. You know, God just knows how to make connections. It's just what He does. And so I'm thankful for our friendship, their friendship to this church. I'm excited about hearing the word of the Lord. Do you have some preach left in you? Amen. Why don't you clap your hands as the man of God comes? Thank you, my friend. Well, somebody said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says to clap your hands, all you people. Hallelujah. Come on. Clap your hands, all you people. But ain't you thankful that it don't stop there? And then it says, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Come on, is there any victory left in the house tonight? Come on, is there any triumphant people left in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, the preacher is in the house. Hey, he's in the house tonight. What are we going to do about it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I come to receive something tonight. Hallelujah. Find somebody else and say, I come to give something tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated for a few minutes. If Don't get too scared because I'm not a long-winded preacher. Normally. It just depends on what the congregation does. Hallelujah. But I, I want to say this too. Brother Darren Motes was God sent, and I I cherish the friendship that we've had so far. I I just turned my baby girl loose 
through security going to Brazil. And I had seen this man by the name of Moats on a flyer. And I said this right here. How many believes in simple faith? Simple faith. I said, Lord, if it's your will, let me run into that man. Let me run into that man. And as sure as I'm standing here, I never met him before, but we had just sent her down the long walkway. And I don't even know if she was quite out of sight yet. And I did this number right here. And I looked, and there he come. And I tore out to him. And it happened just like he said it did. That's a God thing. Hallelujah. The reason we're here tonight and the reason we're friends was a God thing. The reason I got connected with the pastor of this church, it's a God thing. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, you may have never been to a Pentecost or an apostolic church, but the reason you're here tonight is because it's a God thing. Hallelujah. God knows how to orchestrate and put the right pieces together. Hallelujah. To make something happen. Hallelujah. And I want to give honor to this pastor. Hallelujah. He's an awesome man. You can tell that by walking into this church. Hey, we come by the new building a while ago. How, how exciting is that? Oh, you just about outgrown this one. How exciting is it that we're going to be in a new building? Hey, this church ain't going to hold us much longer. Hey, you ought to get excited about it tonight. God's taking us places, and it's a God thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give honor to these men that I've met tonight in this church family and to Brother Weed. He was God sent to. Hallelujah. He was a God sent friend. You know what I'm experiencing? There is some great apostolic men. Hallelujah. And I'm proud to be a part of it. And I'm proud to have friends in this wonderful message. How many has got some preach left in you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I feel something tonight. And we've been fought all week long. It seems like one thing's happened after another. And I'm telling you, when that happens, God is about to do something. God has a plan. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter number 23. Hallelujah. I'd like to say it's good to have my wife and my kids with us tonight. Thank them for being here. Hallelujah. Thank God for an awesome family. 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse number 9. Hallelujah. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Hoiite, one of three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines that were there, gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary. There's times that we get weary. Hallelujah. There's times we get weary. But it don't stop there. It says, and his hand clave unto the sword. And his hand clave unto the sword and the Lord wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to the spool would you lift your hands and let's go to the Lord in prayer right now hallelujah come on could somebody lift up the name of Jesus all over this house 
Hallelujah, God, we need you to move even stronger than you've already moved in this house. Hallelujah, we got some young people that need a moving in the Holy Ghost tonight in 2024. Hallelujah, come on, let's lift him up right now. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, move in a mighty way tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you may be seated. Can I take this jacket off? Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let go. Hallelujah. Find you somebody else and look at them and say, don't let go. Hallelujah. Now, I, I come to preach to us tonight in the Holy Ghost, and I, I feel like I got a message and a burden. Hallelujah. But I read to you about a man by the name of Eleazar. Hallelujah. And I, I don't know about you, but when I read in this, this passage of Scripture right here, something gets a hold of me. Hallelujah. I like men that like to fight. Hallelujah. I like men that's got a backbone that'll stand up and they're going to stand for something. But Eleazar was one of the first three of David's mighty men. Hallelujah. And I, I want to tell us tonight, no doubt he was a man of war and he knew how to fight. You may be seated. Hallelujah. He had trained and he had fought. Hallelujah. And I asked Brother Darren Motes, I said, are you going to play ball tonight? And he looked at me, now our friendship's getting stronger. He looked at me and he said, I don't know, I don't think so. He said, because when I play, I like to win. Hallelujah. And I, I don't know about you, but I, when I'm doing something, I like to win. Hallelujah. When I'm doing something, I like to win. You can ask my wife sitting back there. If we're doing something and somebody beats me, it's because they beat me. If we're playing horseshoes, they beat me at horseshoes because I'm going to give it everything I got. Hallelujah. But Eleazar knew how to win. Hallelujah. And there was other men of war there that day, but the Bible says that they had gone away. Hallelujah, they had went away and Eleazar was standing here this day and he was standing there. David might have been there with him. Hallelujah, but we're gonna preach it like this. He was standing there and he had a determination. Hallelujah, there's times that you just simply gotta get a determination. Hallelujah, as the other men went away, Eleazar began to stand there. And I want to say this right here. If you don't get a determination, there'll be something that'll come your way that'll cause you to go the other way. Hallelujah, can I preach to the young people right now? Hallelujah. If you're not careful, there'll be things that'll come your way and you'll think, you know what? It would be easier to go the other way as to stand up and to, and to hold my ground and begin to fight. Hallelujah. But I want to tell us right now in the Holy Ghost, we cannot turn around and run. We cannot turn around and run from our problems. Hey, we got to learn to stand up and face our problems head on. Hallelujah. 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 There's times as young people and there's times as adults, uh, if we're not careful, we'll look at something that comes our way and we say, you know what? It would be easier to run the other way. I want to sound the alarm tonight and let you know it'll never be easier to run away from your problem. Now, I don't care how hard it gets. Uh, it's never easier to turn and run uh, when opposition comes. Uh, the best thing to do uh, is to stand up uh, and meet it head on. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I don't know if you've ever heard it like this, but once you start running, you'll always run. Hallelujah. That's why as young men, get some fight about you. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you to go hit your best friend, okay? But I'm telling you 
that when the enemy comes up against you, you need to get some backbone on the inside of you and say, you know what? I'm not going to cower down to you, devil. I'm not going to cower down to you, Satan. Come on, young girls. Get some fight on the inside of you. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the most high God. I'm serving the Lord. The enemy will say, hey, why don't you come over here and participate in this and be a part of this? You stand up and say, hey, I'm a child of the king. I've been blood bought. I've been born again. I've been buried in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I got to get to where I'm going. Hallelujah. But don't ever run from a problem. Hallelujah, don't ever run from the problem. Because if you're not careful, all of a sudden you'll think, you know what? Well, that was easy to run from. And then the next time you'll say, well, I'm going to run from that. And then before you know it, you once was close to the church. You once was close to God. And now all of a sudden you've run completely away from him. But Eleazar said, I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to stand right here. Isaiah 59 and 19, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I preach it like I feel it? Brother Moats, we got a new convert in our church. Hallelujah. And she called my wife today and my wife had her on speakerphone. And she began to talk about how the enemy likes to come up against his people. Hallelujah. And she said, I've made a stand and I'm not going back. Hallelujah. She said, I've made a stand and I'm not going back. And I think she said it's something like this. She said, when the enemy raises up a flood against me, she said, I know that my God is going to put a dam up against the flood and he's going to stop the flood because he's going to raise up a standard against it. You get excited when you hear a new convert say that. You want to run when you hear a new convert say that. You want to shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you saying, preacher? Why would you run for something when the enemy, when the Lord is going to raise up a standard against it? Hallelujah. He's going to raise up a standard against it. Hallelujah. You ever been in a battle just to survive? Hallelujah. And all of a sudden you get those chills about like I got right now. That runs from your bald head. Hallelujah. And it starts running all the way to the soles of your feet. And all of a sudden you think, you know what? The helper showed up. I'm going to tell you the helper is in this house tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going somewhere. You may be seated. So I want to tell you, young people, don't ever run from your problems. Hear me right now. Don't ever run from your problems. Hallelujah. Come on, young ladies. Hallelujah. There's even times as apostolic young kids that we're going to fail. But failure is never final when Jesus is in the room. Hallelujah. Failure is never final when Jesus is in the room. Don't run from your failure. Learn from your failures. Don't let it keep you down. Learn to get back up. The Bible says to rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. For when you see me fall, I shall arise. Look at somebody and say, I'm getting back up. Find you somebody else and say, I'm getting back up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're not careful, you'll run from guilt and you'll run from failures. Hallelujah. But you've got to meet those things head on. I'm telling you, young people, in 2024, you've got to meet them head on. 
Hallelujah. There's things coming after us on every angle. Hallelujah. But you've got to get this down on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And you've got to be like this man by the name of Eleazar. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You know what happened to him? He got a made up mind. That's what happened to him. He got a made up mind that there ain't nothing gonna turn me around. And I come to preach to us tonight at Calvary. We gotta get a made up mind that there ain't nothing that's gonna turn us around. Hey, my mind's made up. And it got to a place where he knew he had a hold of something that was greater than his problem. Come on, he knew he had a hold of something that was greater than the Philistines. He knew he had a hold of something that was greater than his enemy. He knew he had a hold of something that was greater than the obstacle. And I wanna tell us tonight, you got a hold of something. You got a hold of something that's greater than anything you'll ever face. Hallelujah, you may be seated. Thank you for helping me preach. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you again. You just stand up and help me preach all night. Somebody said you'll have to stop them. Help me preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanna tell us tonight, if you're in this church, I don't care who you are or where you come from. Is you're, if you're in this church tonight, you've got a hold of something greater tonight than anything that's in this world. You've got a hold of something tonight that's greater than anything that'll try to slip you up on social media. You got a hold of something tonight that's greater than any adversity or adversary tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Bible says that Eleazar smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave to the sword. We don't know how many Philistines was there, but we know there was a lot of them because his hand got weary. His hand got weary and it clave to the sword. Hallelujah. Bring me that sword, buddy. I pondered on bringing this, but I thought it's a youth service. Somebody may want to get a hold of it. Hallelujah. Somebody may want to get a hold of it. The weapon got heavy. Hallelujah. But he held on to the sword. And I could see somewhere in his mind, Brother Moats, he was battling and he was swinging the sword with everything that he had. Hanging on to it. And all of a sudden, his hand gets weary and he's just about to let it go. Just about to let it go, and all of a sudden, it begins to go through his mind. Eleazar, you got to hold on to the sword. There's something about the sword. You can't let go of the sword. You got to get a hold of it. And tonight, I want to preach. Don't let go of the sword. Get a hold of it with everything that you got. I don't care who tries to take it away. You let them know I got a hold of the sword. Hey, and I know how to swing it. I know how to swing it tonight. They ain't nothing gonna take it out of my hand. Hallelujah. He'd get weary. He'd get weak and he'd say, no, I got to hold on to the sword. There's another one coming. I got to hold on to the sword. The sword was taking him everywhere. Hallelujah. Clap your hands with me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I feel like telling somebody, you may be tired tonight, but don't let go of the sword. Hallelujah. You may be weary tonight, but don't let go of the sword. You may be going through one of the greatest battles of your life, but get a hold of the sword. Don't let it go.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I looked up the word struggle this week. Hallelujah. I looked up the word struggle this week. And as soon as I looked up the word struggle, I got on the definition and I sent it to somebody. Hallelujah. You know what struggle means? Hallelujah. It's right up against fight. It's right up against spar. It's right up against battle. It's right up against, you know what? I'm not giving up. Hallelujah. You may be struggling tonight, but I come to tell somebody, don't let go of the sword tonight. You get a hold of it with everything that you got on the inside of you. Because if you're still struggling, you're still fighting. It's when you lay down, that's when you give up. But as long as you're struggling, you still got a hold of the sword, young people. I'm going to tell you, there's times we're going to struggle. Hallelujah, but don't let go of it. Hallelujah, the Bible says that the Lord wrought a great victory. You know why he brought a great victory? I'm going to preach it like this tonight. It's because he had a hold of something. Come on, he had a hold of something that was greater than his adversary tonight. Willie, that's one name I remember in here. Come here, buddy. Grab a hold of that thing. Hallelujah. It feels pretty good, don't it? Don't ever let that thing go, buddy. Come, I don't care what comes your way. And there's things that's coming our young kids' way. You let them know, I've got a hold of something. I've got a hold of something. Hey, I've got a hold of something that's greater than anything I'll ever face. Willie, you got a hold of the sword tonight, baby. You got a hold of the sword tonight. Don't ever let go of it. Thank you. Hallelujah. And his hand clave unto the sword. And the Bible says that the Lord wrought a great victory. That's all I feel in here tonight. The Lord is wanting to give somebody a great victory. Maybe it's been a while since you've got a great victory. The Lord's wanting to give it tonight. Maybe it's been a while since you prayed through to the Holy Ghost. Now, hey, the Lord's wanting to give it to you tonight. Look at somebody and say, you can make it. Find you somebody else and say, you can make it. Hallelujah. Come on, this is a youth service, but I'm preaching to older people tonight too. Y'all can make it. Come on, y'all can make it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm not going to preach a whole lot longer. Hallelujah. His hand was weary, yet it clave to the sword. Hallelujah. It clave to the sword. He was losing his strength, but it clave to the sword. I'm going to tell you, you've got something to cleave to tonight. You've got something to hold on to tonight. This young man right here was praying all before service. He's the one. He's the only one. He's the one. I'm going to tell you, he's the one tonight. He's the only one tonight. Hold on to Jesus with everything that you got. And keep pursuing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to go a little bit further. Hallelujah. We're going to get weary, but we cannot quit. I want to tell you that's one option that we've got to remove tonight. That's one option that we got to get rid of tonight. I'm not trying to hype you up, but I'm trying to put some fight down on the inside of you because you got to have it. Hallelujah. If you look at the commentaries and you start looking through them, it gets to talking about when his hand claved to the sword that they actually tell you that his hand and the sword become as one. 
Come on, somebody. His hand and the sword became as one because he had such a tight grip on the sword. The sword and his hand begin to join together. Hallelujah. The commentaries will tell you that the metal of the sword and the flesh of his hand come together as one. Hallelujah. They come together as one man and one sword as though you took two things and you begin to solder them together. They become a part of each other. And I come to tell somebody tonight, you in this truth have got to become as one. You've got to become as one. This wonderful truth that God's gave you a revelation of, you got to become one with it. Don't let nobody turn you away from it. You tell them, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. There's one God, and that's who I'm holding on to tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to preach it like this. There was a time that he couldn't have let go of the sword if he would have wanted to. Hallelujah. There was a time that he couldn't have let go of the sword even if he would have wanted to. Why? Because it had become a part of him. You know what would happen right now if somebody tried to take this sword? It'd be hard to get it out of this hand because it's become a part of who I am. Let this truth, hear me right now, let this truth become a part of you. Fall in love with it with everything you got. Fall in love with it with everything that you got. When your pastor gets up and he teaches a Bible study on being buried in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, fall in love with it with everything that you got and hold on to it today. Hold on to There's no other way. The Bible says that neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. You got to hold us something tonight. I could feel it when I walked in, but this is a praying church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Solid rock from Marshall rub shoulders with somebody right now. This is what we want. This is what we want. I looked over at Brother Moats and I said, I love the church. I, I didn't know it, but Brother Weed had just told him or right after he said, I love the church. Hallelujah, it's because y'all's got a hold of something, elder. Y'all's got a hold of something. Hallelujah. Drug addicts cannot come in an atmosphere like this without leaving change. When they come in here, something's going to get a hold of them. I'm trying to be careful right now. Hallelujah. But somebody needs to get a hold of this and see what it feels like. (laughs) Somebody needs to get a hold of this and see what it feels like. Hallelujah. There's something about when you get a hold of the sword. You need to get a hold of what you're feeling in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I I want to be careful because it's a youth service. But the world is not going to offer you what you feel in here. Come on. The world is not going to offer you what you feel in here. Can I preach it like I'm at home? 
There ain't nothing that you're going to experience in this world uh, that's going to get a hold of you like you experienced in here tonight. Uh, I'm telling you, if you get a hold uh, of what you're feeling tonight, uh, the devil will never take you out. Uh, if you get a hold uh, of this tonight, uh, alcohol will never take you out. Uh, if you get a hold of this tonight, Drugs will never take you out. You know what the drug addict's looking for? They're looking for what you got. Come on. You know what the man that's... A Hey, he can't go another day without alcohol. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for what you got. Don't you be interested in what he's got because he's wanting what you got. He's trying to get help, and you're the one that can help him, but you got to hold on to it. Hallelujah, wasn't it David? Hallelujah. That showed up looking for a weapon. Hallelujah. And he said, do you have a weapon? And they said, I've only got one. I've only got one. And it's the sword that you slew Goliath with. Hallelujah. He said the sword is wrapped in the ephod. Hallelujah. He said the sword is wrapped on the other side of your worship. Hallelujah. I'm telling somebody tonight, if you begin to worship him with everything you got right now, there's a sword on the other side of your worship. Come on, young people. I ain't got to go any further. You've been looking to get a hold of something. I'm telling you, there's a sword on the other side of your worship. If you begin to worship him, you can get a hold of the sword. David said, there's none like it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Hallelujah. I've got a lot further I could go, but I'm done with the notes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If somebody will begin to worship him. Hallelujah, there's a miracle laying on the other side of your worship. Hallelujah, if you'll step out right now and begin to worship him, there's a miracle on the other side of your worship. Hey, there's a healing on the other side of your worship. There's deliverance on the other side of your worship. There's a way out on the other side of your worship. Come on, young people. Hallelujah. Come on, young people. Come on. There's a miracle in this house for you, but it's on the other side of your worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah. Come on right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come on, there's a miracle. Just begin to worship him. Come on, come on, there it is. I'm getting a hold of it tonight, preacher. Hallelujah, come on right now, in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Yes! Come on, could you?
Would somebody shout unto the Lord right now with a voice of triumph? Get your miracle! Get your miracle! Make a bold proclamation tonight. I'm not leaving here until I get it. Come on. If you can't get it on the side of the building, come to the front. If you can't get it in the back of the building, come to the front. There's a miracle here. Come on. Get up here where the miracle worker is. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, we're fixing to turn on loose singing. But I want to push just a little bit harder. Come on. Somebody needs to get their healing tonight. Somebody needs to get their miracle tonight. But you got to do what the preacher said. You got to let your need begin to push you into motion. Come on, come on, young people, get in the middle of it tonight.
Come on. That's it. You ain't getting my testimony, devil. You ain't getting my testimony, flesh. I've got something that's greater than you.